it's the daisy good afternoon everyone <laughs> got a view out my window and i'm just a little bit running behind sorry about that welcome everyone to the spiritual wisdom hour with victoria cochran uh, wednesday the 13th of august and oops just um getting myself into gear how are we everyone hope you're well and uh i'm looking forward to connecting with uh some regulars and some new people today as we talk about all things spiritual and things that concern you while i can't do uh individual readings uh, so i won't pull cards for individual people I'll certainly address issues that might be concerning people that could help the collective. Hi Janelle, lovely to see you. I have some new cards, so I'm really looking forward to using those. And uh, they're energy oracle cards and they're beautiful. So uh, I wonder if anybody is having some spiritual development um, issues or questions. Please pop them up and then we can go from there. Hi Nettie. Hi Charlotte. Good to see you. Charlotte said, it's 12 o'clock here. Are you on? I was like, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, so I've been into Wynyard this morning to see a lovely client and uh, did a healing on the phone and then I'm back again. Hi Bridgie. Great to see you. And Katie, Tracy, Cherie. Uh, no, not doing individual readings. I just can't do it. It just um, takes away from helping everybody. Hi, Sally. But uh, please, you know, by all means. Hello from Brisbane. Hi, Charlotte. I'm in on the northwest coast of Tasmania. Uh, I am a psychic channel and medium and spiritual healer. And I can work with people on the phone or on skype or on whatsapp or anything like that um and uh i love helping people and i also seem to have oh show day right so a bit of a holiday up there in brisbane um so i seem to also have a bit of knowledge around spiritual development and so i do help people step into their own uh into their own gifts so that's my passion at the moment is helping people to raise their energies so that we can all help each other and not be stuck in the really heavy duty global stuff hi from charleston wow sc i'm not sure where that is but i'm sure it's in america or somewhere good to see you pam um had a big breakthrough in the last couple of days with Spirit. Looking forward to your live show today. So, awesome, Bridgie. Do you want to bring up something that um, you've had to work through that might be helpful for someone else? And that's where we'll start. But I'm also going to pull a card now for everybody. And that always just gets me on the, on the road to discussion. Uh, so, I'm glad. That's really good. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what they're trying to tell us, uh, what the messages are, and it can come in uh, really cryptic ways sometimes. I had a friend who um, has always had a crow. Hi from WA, love WA. Hi Karen. Um, had a crow knocking down her door and she had Archangel Sandophon with her and Archangel Sandophon is pictured with a crow on his shoulder so he was trying to get a message to her but she was having trouble deciphering what he wanted. Yes, okay, right. So Charlotte's going through an energy change but a lot of people are. Um, a lot of transition happening. Transition's always messy. Um, okay, so the first one is woman holding a heart but it's 44 too and the 4-4 four four, is a master number to say that the angels are with you and now is time for healings of the heart and actually trying to actually work out hi Jackie 
to actually uh, lift past hurts and to heal your heart space so that you're not actually really wearing your heart on your sleeve so much. Hi from Rockhampton. I love having people from all over Australia and around the world. So uh, now's the time to be looking at if you are wounded, if people are actually triggering something or something just keeps coming up for you to actually really heal that because if you look at the picture she's holding her heart but on her arm she's got a black heart armband yeah 444 um very powerful number and it's an angelic frequency actually 444 is angelic soul figure fre frequency so it means that the angels are really with you and so if you have any any heart woundedness guys it's really time to start to look at that okay so Bridgie says hi Shelley great to see you thank you um so my meditation last night was very overwhelming my grandpa my grandma came to me and told me she loved me and forgave me she passed when I was 15 and I was made to stay home by my mum was not able to say goodbye um so big for me yes and that's a really big heart healing too and healing grief as well look i've done lots of um mediumship where it's been so healing for the people who um have uh been left behind but also the people who've passed over so it's just so wonderful that your grandmother actually came to you and was able and you were able to receive that message we're all able to receive messages we just have to believe that we can and we need to be open to open to it but also protect ourselves so that we're not just not letting any flotsam and jetsam in as well because once the door to the spirit world's open um, it can flood us with unwanted energy um, is it hard to it's hard to see yes it is i'm need i'm needing help for my brother i feel like i'm close to really see what i need to help him it is hard that's a really great question andrea because uh your brother yeah and kim worried about her son not in a happy place so we're all we all have free will and uh so the choices we make are not always for our highest and best we're not always going to lead us to learning our lessons or to help ourselves. And they might even, the choices might even be to do what that fellow did in Sydney yesterday and run down the road with a knife and stab people. You know, we make those choices. No one can intervene. Not even God can help us unless we ask for help. Sometimes, you know, we go through the low stuff to learn the lessons so that we can help other people. Um, so it's certainly um, an opportunity to learn lessons. Um, quantum, is that quantum healing? Um, yes. So Katie, I'll come back to that. Um, hi Yvonne. Hi Lisa. Lovely to see you. Um, yeah, so it's hard to see. Yeah, how would I help? Well, um him knowing that you're there is always really uh so for your son or for your brother or whoever it is that you need to help out there um let me pull a card for everybody who's got people that they're worried about that they don't really know how to help but look we can lead a horse to water and all of that you know we can offer help but sometimes they'll refuse for pride or um you know i saw someone yesterday who's niece had actually um, committed suicide and hadn't told anybody of what she was feeling but hadn't thought that she would be able to get the help either and so sometimes they're in such a place where they don't feel they deserve help or they don't think that anyone would listen so it's a really good it's a start to let them know that you're there without interfering the other thing is to send love from your heart space to that person every night um, or every day because uh, we're all connected we're all one and we are connected through mind body and spirit so we need to just let each other know 
that we're there and we can do that telepathy tel I can't even say that telepathically there we go um, and by sending love and uh, speaking to them um, through our heart space to theirs you can also talk to their higher self so we all have a higher self that sits up here I think sometimes it's called the causal body but it's our higher self or our Christ itself and so you can talk to the higher self of that person and offer help and tell them that you're there for them and it's not about telling them what to do it's just offering them support and assistance because part of the trouble that a lot of people have on the, in the world at the moment is lack of connect, connect can't even speak today lack of connection lack of connection to self but lack of connection to the love of the creator and as, as I've said before it's got nothing to do with religion Religion's one way of finding that, but it's connecting to the unconditional love of source, which we all come from and we go back to. Um, and so if we don't feel that we're connected to that, then we lose our way really, really quickly. And if we feel that we've been abandoned by Creator because we've been abandoned by a family or whatever, then we can really, really become so disconnected that life just seems a waste of time. So talking to their higher self can be a really good thing to do, but also sending an Archangel like Archangel Michael or um, to send love and to offer healing to their higher self, which their higher self will accept or reject. And, it, and then you don't actually accept the karma. So um, hello, uh, I'm getting a lots of hellos. Yes, um, so yeah, people make these choices and uh, if they're really stuck in their ego self, which is sacral chakra, and they actually haven't started to be overloaded by their soul self, then they will do selfish things like littering and not taking any notice, or they will just stay stuck in their story and not be able to let it go and if someone's stuck in their story they just rehash and rehash and rehash um, not doing cards for individuals today but I'm about to pull one for all those people who are worried about um, loved ones and don't know how to assist but the main thing is to let them know that you're there without judgment because as I was talking about the unconditional love of the creator people really don't grow up very often with being loved unconditionally we're loved conditionally you know our parents um, parents love can be conditional upon us getting good grades or upon us you know um, keeping a tidy room or and some I, some children see um, see that as not being loved you know and we do it for their highest and best and for their good greater good and want them to grow up as as uh, uh, decent human beings but are we alienating them by being too tough with the love and always growling ra rather than letting them know that it's okay to make a mistake or that it's okay that they are who they are that they're not good at something um that we love them because they are them and so if we've grown up with conditional love then it's really hard to feel that or know what unconditional love from the Creator feels like so not judging your brother or your son your husband you know whoever's in depression or whatever's going on for them just being there for them and not wanting anything from them is probably the best way to start helping them you know and uh, so and here we go this is community connection so seven is actually the highest spiritual number you can get it's a very spiritual number and so we need connection it's like um, spirit body mind really you know we need all that holy trinity of being connected um, sorry that happens a lot doesn't it being connected to ourselves but also to the people who love us and knowing that people uh, love us um, but uh, also um, being connected uh, 
to our mind but to our heart space and and not being stuck in our mind or stop it st stuck in our story but also connected to ourselves in spirit and to our higher selves and to the love of the creator so um guys i really can't do individual readings thank you for asking but if you would like one please connect to me and um i have reasonable rates and uh am easily contactable okay so here we have a question that will help a lot of people um, so I hope that helped uh, the people who are worried about people who are just not asking for help and who are stuck in a dark spot we really can't do anything and sometimes oh, sometimes they just need to learn their lesson um, and it's awful to, to think that you know, we have to let our children or our loved ones learn hard lessons, but we can't live their lives for them. And we don't know what life contracts they're holding or what lessons they've chosen to learn. Um, but just being there for them and just being a guiding light for them is really the best thing you can do without judgment. Okay. Andrea Angel, I'm the most giving person but always get abandoned by the people I love the most. It's difficult not to take it personally and wonder why I'm lovable. I need set boundaries. Um, okay, that's a really good question that will help a lot of people because a lot of us are very giving but then we don't get much back and then wonder why we're absolutely exhausted. Hi Donna, great to see you. I hope you're well. How's that beautiful little girl of yours? Um, thank you, Andrea. Um, so to get in touch with me for reading, you can ask, you can go through Spiritual Events Directory and Sarah will put you on to me, Sarah Watkins. Um, also, my uh, page is Reaching Out Spiritual News, so you can find me on Facebook there or I have a website, victoriacochran.com, so I'm pretty easy. If you Google me, you'll find me. But also, um, I was a literacy coach and... Um, so uh, and an educator so you'll find some of my stuff on there from education as well um, Bridgie says that card for me means embrace the community that is front of you to help guide you on your path absolutely thank you and people just yeah put through what you interpret from the cards that are coming up hi Roxy great to see you um, hi yes yeah, so that it is these cards are beautiful they're the energy oracle cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. So back to the question of why are we always getting abandoned? So, you know, the tough love question is, are we allowing people to do that? What are we putting out from ourselves? And so what I've, what I've learned from uh, doing theta healing and doing a lot of work on myself that we can't change anyone else and we can't work on anyone else. We can only work on ourselves and the way that we're reacting to people or the, that people are reacting to us is a mirror we're mirrors for each other so what are we putting out um, that's coming back to us and so I would ask have you abandoned yourself in some way are you give give giving to be liked by someone or to feel that you're a good person and, and look these are deep beliefs um, that we don't even know we're holding that possibly most likely comes from our childhood but if we're giving so much and not getting the, the exchange then is it because we don't feel good enough and that we're plying with people plying people with our energy for them to validate us in some way and so I would go back to holding um, you know holding yourself in love and actually giving yourself love and looking for those deep beliefs or wounds that you have around not feeling good enough and um, feeling abandoned by the creator or just not supporting yourself in some way what is it that you're holding that is allowing people to treat you that way and so the more that you love yourself and the more that you can give to yourself the more people will give back to you and appreciate you for who you are so do you appreciate yourself Andrea for who you are if you answer yes that's fine but I really want you to think about that it's very confronting to work on ourselves and to think about those things that are challenging and are perhaps 
seen as weaknesses or flaws, but actually they're not. We're human, you know, we have human feelings and and we have an ego and all of that. And so it's okay that we have that, but it's knowledge is power. So then it's just about connecting to that inner that inner voice and really sitting in your heart space to really know where it comes from and um, why you might be feeling that way. So we all are connected to, uh, look at this beautiful card, honestly these cards are amazing. Um, we're all connected to the love of the creator, the light of the creator and the more that we're connected and uh, at peace with ourselves, the more in flow we'll be. And um, and then everything just happens. Everything happens for a reason too. But um, it's it's a really good thing. If something is happening over and over and over again, the only, only person you can really examine is yourself. And you can only fix yourself. And then if people are still um, turning away, then that's their problem, isn't it? That's their stuff. Bridgie, you're amazing. Thank you. For me, I was a giver and thanks to Victoria, I now know that I was a giver because I believed by only giving to others was my sole purpose. But it's not I am my sole purpose because to heal others, you must, um, I'm trying to see more, be healed yourself. Couldn't have spoken more truer words. So I am... Um, awakened to my gifts and then I did a course and met Archangel Michael and was so on the spiritual train and you know and then I did Reiki 1 and 2 but I was still a lot in ego um, but I also had a lot of uh, inner child stuff yeah definitely Andrea keep working on your self-love and ask the masters and archangels to help you um, but I definitely do, uh, that's the, the stuff that I do, is to look for the past trauma that you've had. And it can, could come from past lifetime as well. So it could go back in time and lift all that trauma and all of that. Deep love and compassion for the self is so important. So important. It starts with self and then radiates out, you know. And it's that as above, so below. So what we put out comes back and all of that stuff. Anyway, I did basic DNA uh, theta healing course and that's the modality that I absolutely love and I did shed quite a bit of childhood stuff but in the advanced DNA I became a different person really I, it was really deep wounds for my childhood my parents loved me to bits um, wow that's awesome yeah um, they loved me to bits and they wanted the best for me and I could never blame them for anything. It was just what I brought in. It was like this soul who just yearned for love and never felt good enough and never felt like I belonged and never had the friends and, you know, it was just always wanting to be liked and never, you know, all of that stuff. And it's taken me, I'm 58 now and I don't, I don't think I can say I'm 100% there. And this is why it's a, it's a lifelong process of self-awareness someone asked me the other day what is consciousness it's awareness isn't it it's bringing what's be lurking below the surface to uh to uh to be consciously aware of and then we can deal with it if it's just ever lurking and we don't know it's there or we can't put our finger on it or we don't want to know it's there then it's always going to sabotage us always so it's uh, it's something that, so I didn't call myself Victoria till I was 52. You know, I was always Vicky and my parents couldn't stand that. So I was Tor or Toria, but they couldn't understand why I had such a beautiful name, but couldn't call myself Victoria. Uh, I'm Victoria Margaret and I thought it was far too regal. And so really that's a self-deserving thing, isn't it? That I didn't feel I deserved the name. I didn't like myself and I didn't feel that I was good enough. And when I finally had gone through those courses and stepped into my, gone through the judgment of people who didn't believe in what I was doing and finally said, well, this is me and, you know, if you don't like it, that's tough. Suddenly, I'm Victoria and I can't stand Vicky. And, you know, so that's my story. That's a real story of a spiritual mm -hmm. healer. Just because we're a spiritual healer and connected doesn't mean that uh, 
we've dealt with everything and that we're hunky dory. It's not the case. We 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 have more of a more of a duty, I think, and a responsibility to make sure that we are dealing with our issues so that we can help other people. Otherwise our energy is going to affect our readings and healings. And so really working on our issues is such an important thing to do and a confronting thing to do but oh my goodness if you go with the motto better out than in then it's which is the one that I use the most then I, it's got to happen so Bridgie says that this card means open the door to spiritual and follow it without fear oh yes Donna says oh gosh I can relate to that statement lol and Rosie says she found self-love. That's so great. Yeah, when we find our self-love, it all just starts to flow in. Luckily, I found my divine union, my twin flame, way before I stepped into that. But he came in to help me with that purpose. And he's never had any trouble with that issue. So um, I'm really lucky there. But it was all divine timing. It's not really luck. It's just the way it's meant to be. Okay, so the next card then. Ah, oh, I love this. I pulled this for my client today. Goddess of the Moon. And it's a full moon at the moment. And uh, so it's shining right in between the slats in my Venetian blinds, right into my eyes in the middle of the night. But I looked up what this meant. And uh, I will read it to you because it's so poignant, I think, for a lot of people to actually start to step into their uh, decisions and their choices that they've made and into who they are. Deborah says, I'm a Deborah. Only mum ever called me that when I was in trouble. I'm known as Debbie or Deb. Yeah, and that's right. It's a choice. Like, if you're happy with that, that's good. But, you know, I think so many of us with our full name got in, you know, if we got into trouble, it was Victoria or Deborah. And so it's just like, yeah, it, it, then it's the association um, isn't it? Uh, so you just have to kind of um, kind of work through that um, and just kind of cut ties to that past and just because what I've been told is um, that our birth name is actually our angelic name or the name that we've been given to in spirit. So when I'm talking to the creator or the archangels I'm only ever Victoria. Uh, so that was the name. And I was going to be Amanda. Mum, mum and Dad were going to call me Amanda. And then somehow it changed to Victoria. So, yeah, there are no coincidences, Roxy. You know, you've just got to go with, well, Amanda was that. I'm so not an Amanda. So, um, you know, that was just the way it was meant to be. I'm just anchoring down my stand. I must get a better one. So, Goddess of the Moon. And actually... I said to my client today, 52 is the very last card in the deck, which means that we have a chance now to end whatever's been happening. Um, yes, absolutely, Kira. Fantastic. I will get in contact with you. But you can also send a message to Sarah on, on here on Spiritual Events Directory uh, Messenger. Or you can get in touch with me on my page, which is spiritual, uh, which is reaching out spiritual news, which is the newsletter that I put out every month, um, and there are links to that on my reaching out spiritual news Facebook page. Um, please send me a message, and I will get back to you today. Um, so this is the last card in the deck. So this is like change your story, end the story, and start a new story. We are co-creators. We are in charge of our own destiny. We create our own reality through the thoughts that we think and the beliefs uh, the beliefs underpin our thoughts. So what we believe, we create. And, um, oh, wow, yes, fantastic. Um, so perfect, Bridgie, Bridget. Um, step into, step into, but I like Bridgie, it suits you. Like if you own it and you wear it and that you're comfortable with it and that's who you are, that's fine. But it's, it's about knowing that who you are is absolutely okay. No one else needs to validate who you are. The only person who needs to validate who you are is you. And so when you do that, 
and say, hey, this is me, then everybody's going to go far out. Everybody's going to say, wow, yes, this is you. And we love you. Endings and new beginnings, exactly. So it's like the world card, um, this card, Goddess of the Moon. It's like it's a chance now to start a new story and the old has to go before the new can come in. So Goddess of the Moon is intuition going within. This card shows an eternal spirit holding the bright reflective moon and standing in front of the crystal clear waters of a sparkling waterfall. Her arms are stretched. Oh, hold on a minute. Upward, receiving the light of the moon, the light of inspiration. This card is all about intuition, the ability to receive insights from your soul's point of view. Receiving the card upright tells you that you have the power to get intuitive information on all types of issues, and now is the time to use it. The goddess of the moon brings you all sorts of information from the mundane to the spectacular. For instance, you could get the urge to take a different route home from work and find out later that you've avoided a three-hour traffic jam. Or you might have an idea for a great invention, a stock investment or a spellbinding novel. This card could also indicate a significant blossoming of psychic ability and mediumship, even on a professional level. You're always blessed with this ability to connect, but this card is telling you that now is the perfect time to open up. Get ready for the amazing inspirations it brings. Um, so I'm just going to take myself off here because it's just not working. So this is the card here and we all have this ability. So it's just being open to it and allowing our guides to get the messages to us. But it brings me to talking about um, to talking about manifestation because I was talking to a lovely lady in the Health Food Shop in Wynyard yesterday who's been a friend for a number of years and she is a total believer in um, being able to manifest our, uh, our own reality. And she will just now think something and believe it and it happens. Like I'm going to, oh, that's wow, that's great. Um, it's like, okay, I'm going to, she said she knew she had a person that she needed some information and she knew there was a person out there who could give her this information and she knew the person was going to come into her shop and so she just said, bring this person to me, creator, thank you for bringing the person to me and a week went by and it didn't happen but she just kept holding the faith and one day the person just walked in she had no idea she'd never met her before but she was exactly the right person and she just walked straight into her shop and she and now even with her grandson she'll say let's just see we're going to see all yellow cars and at the roundabout every single car in the roundabout was yellow so what do we need to focus on where we put our energy is what we create and so if we're putting our energy into negativity and hopelessness and uh, self-pity then that's what we get if we put our energy into focusing on creating um, a better life for ourselves and and being free from uh, people and events and situations that are restricting us then we will make that happen. We just have to believe it. We are co-creators. We're powerful manifestors. But the mind can really get in the way. And we just need to watch what we're telling ourselves, the words that come out of our mouths, and just how we're creating that, you know, what are we creating. So it's really, really important to now focus only on what's important. Prioritise and in our mind just shelve all the worries and things stay in the highest vibration and stay in that energy of unconditional love gratitude and um, clear crystal clear focus on what's important so we're if we're focusing on if we're sweating the small stuff then more small stuff will arise and just clog us up with kind of incidental stuff that really has no meaning or purpose but if we're really focusing on 
what's really important for us and what um, can help to create something better than what, what we've got now and we believe that it can happen and ask give permission because as I said there is the law of non-intervention not even God can intervene on that then give permission for the right person you know the right conditions everything um, to come in for you to help you with that Debbie says speaking of focusing I must get back to studying blessing one and all right good luck to you Debbie well done um, and Barbara says she so believes that and just just you know what we believe too and believing that we can do it that puts us in a high vibration mind you people who want to create bad things in the world also have crystal clear focus they get what they wish for they get what they want because they have crystal clear focus and they believe they can do it so we have to watch the way that we're doing it everything is with intent and also what we create could be really positive but the intention behind it could bring that down so if somebody creates something and really um, goes all out and I don't know makes this beautiful kind of setting for a party but it's all about showing themselves off then people get that vibration and it just puts things down thank you Rosie yeah so we can create things with crystal clear focus but it's the intention behind it that is really what creates it and cements it in so it's really about making sure that when we're creating something for ourselves we're believing it with crystal clear focus but we're doing it with love loving intention without um we don't need to sacrifice we can we can like I, I've, I've actually fully intended this week that I'm going to win Powerball I just I was really inspired by Vicky actually and I just thought okay well why can't I because then I can pay off all our debts I can help all the family and then we can go around the world and I can get the message out and I can publish my book and it's like yeah that'll work for me so let's just hold that intention and see how it works we don't have to sacrifice our energy we don't have to be um, you know paupers to be in service we can still you know have that exchange of energy because we're giving so much we need to get back and it's about time I got the abundance back for my books and everything that I've done that's you know cost money and I've done it with love and with with the faith that it was meant to happen so let's just um, just put that out there say well I, I deserve it too and then I can help more people by doing it so it's not um, that I'm going to use this money to you know I don't know do something awful with it it's all about helping others um, so let's there's some really good comments coming in thank you for your interactions like they say be careful what you wish for it does manifest consciously or unconsciously absolutely and what we tell ourselves goes into our subconscious and then we believe it even and we create it even when we're not consciously aware that we're doing it so we do need to and it does take a couple of weeks I'm told to actually be able to change our subconscious thoughts so Roxy says I was going to go for a walk in the Dandenong Mountains this morning but changed my mind in the last minute and went to the beach. The water is still and crystal clear. Perfect. Yeah. That's amazing because maybe there were some, you know, water has water sprites and, you know, it's, it's uh, water in all the cards, water represents emotion too, so it's very calming and... Uh, yeah, there must have been a reason that you had to do that. So, um, yes, let's do this, Victoria. Let's manifest what we want. In America, we have a very difficult leader. Yes, and look at how that happened. We all knew that he was wrong, but he was the one who manifested it because he totally believed that he was the only one who could save America. So he actually just manifested that totally. Um, if I can manifest what total out there, love manifestation seems total realistic. Um, can you just explain that again, Charlotte? I'm having a, a, a bit of trouble understanding what you're trying to do to say. Um, <laughs> yeah so anyway let's just 
asked about manifestation gleam. Um, and then I'm going to take you through a quick um, uh, a quick meditation um, to show you. Uh, we did one with a wealth box, but you don't actually necessarily have, necessarily have to have a wealth box. It's just about bringing it into the highest energy and then breathing love and light into it and then releasing attachment. That's the thing. I think a lot of us hold on to stuff. It's like, okay, so now I'm going to wait till Thursday at 8.01 or something. To, no, it's just like I put it out there and then I won't worry about it. I bought a raffle ticket the other day. Sound. Oh, look. Oh. Do you know what that one might be? Is that better, Shelley? Because I actually had a box there. what it was thank you for um telling me that is that better just a thumbs up or something hopefully it is um anyway it's a feeling of being truly loved and so what better that's good thanks for telling me um if i can manifest what Total out there, love manifestation seems total realistic. Yeah, so if you're not receiving the love that you deserve, and we all deserve to be loved unconditionally, then it's about loving yourself, loving yourself enough to not accept um, conditional love from someone and to be treated like you're not important. So it always goes back to self. What are you putting out there that is making someone feel that they can control you or um, use you or not love you and just you know like it just always does and when you do love yourself enough then you'll be strong enough to do what you need to do great um, so yes you definitely need to work on that and uh, it, it, it always comes back to self that's the thing always comes back to self um, So let's do this manifestation, but I was going to choose a card. Yeah, and Broken Heart would be, and there was Happy Family, so two of them. You know, there's a lot of people in situations where uh, they are not being treated fairly or equally. Um, by family or um, and so it's about healing the heart but it's it's also uh, happy family there's a four again you know um, if something's broken in the family then uh, the only thing you can do is check your energy and see if there's anything you're contributing to but sometimes you need to distance yourself from people who are causing lots of drama even if they're in your family um, but it's also about um, loving each other uh, like reconnecting and bringing uh, bringing the family back together through um, connection you know and uh, that takes some work sometimes, but uh, it fam family is all there is. To me, it's like family is everything. And so if we have trouble in our family, then that's what we need to be working on is, you know, sometimes we do have to distance ourselves for a time. But as I said before, sending energy through your heart space, talking to their higher selves, sending Archangel Michael love, doing some... It, there's no intervention with sending love. There's no patent or conditions around unconditional love. So it's not intervening to send someone love. To send them healing, yes, if they don't want it. But to send love, there's no conditions around that. So family, even dysfun dysfunctional families can actually still still work. It's just about finding a common ground, I think. You know um, and one more before we do this meditation so this is what I pulled from my client today the daughter romance 
with yourself, unlocking the key to your own heart and really seeing the beautiful soul within, seeing your beautiful self and accepting yourself for who you are. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it's the integrity of, of uh, who you are and um, yeah, and so it works, send the love. It works, it's so powerful, Rosie, sending love. Of course, we're all connected, we're all one and the same. So sending love with intention, with loving intention, is just such a powerful thing to do. Honestly, um, there couldn't be anything more powerful. Just as sending hatred with intention is such a destructive thing to do. You know, so... It's the intention behind it. I love this card too. It's just like love is the answer. Love is the key to everything. Um, okay, so let's manifest what we want in our lives. So just relaxing in the chair, taking a few breaths, feel yourself present in the space, clearing your mind of any other thing and just... Sending your energy down through your body and intentionally grounding into Mother Earth. Send light roots down into the earth. And just feel yourself anchoring so that when we're connecting to spirit, we're still anchored in our physical body. And then breathe in and breathe the energy up through our bodies right up to uh, our crown. And then... Breathe our energy down into your heart space. And now we're going to hold the intention that we're in the unconditional love of the Creator. The seventh plane of existence connected to Source. And so just see this beautiful light expanding out from your heart space, filling your body and surrounding you in pearlescent, white light it's sparkly there are no people and the energy changes just ever slightly it's very peaceful it's very blissful and it's unconditional so take a few breaths in and out feel yourself just melting into this beautiful energy and just be for a minute breathing in and out giving thanks and gratitude for your life, for the love in your life, for health. And just, just giving gratitude for any small thing can create a really big, wonderful thing. So feeling something that you're really grateful for. And just feel yourself melding into the energy, totally protected and safe and grounded. And now we hold the intention of manifesting what we want or need in our lives in the highest and best way and for our highest and best. So visualize now or see or just know what it is you wish to ask for that you need to have. So uh, it could be clearing the air with a friend. It could be a new bike because one got crashed or whatever it is that you wish to manifest in your life. Just see it and actually... Uh, either see the words or just visualize it in your mind and then we're going to breathe the beautiful light and love of the Creator into it and give thanks for it already being in our lives thank you for this abundance that's coming thank you for uh, whatever it is you're asking for so breathing light and love into it until it's glowing either white or golden 
and give thanks and gratitude that it is coming or that it is in your life already. And when it is as bright, as bright as can be, then just release and let go and say, I trust, I give thanks, and so it is. Then bring yourself back to your heart space. And then you can visualize the next thing if there's something else. Sometimes it never rains but it pours. The washing machine breaks down and the car breaks down or whatever. So the next thing that you might or that you feel that you need to have in your life or something you need to let go of or something that you wish to manifest and create in your reality, see it, visualize it, breathe light and love and golden light into it, give thanks for it coming into your life and being part of your life for your highest and best and in the highest and best way. Very important to ask that. And then just see it get brighter and brighter as you breathe light and love into it. So you're really breathing life into it and making it holding the intention that it will be giving thanks gratitude and let it go when you're ready and see it whiz off and bring yourself back to now let's go for broke do one more thing <laughs> so again see it visualize it whatever it is now if you're asking for it for someone else you might just say by the law of grace because that then just uh, cuts through spiritual law and just allows you to ask it without creating karma or anything and ask for in the highest and best way with divine ease and grace and then breathe love and light and life into it. Give gratitude for it and thanks. See it glow until it's almost gone, it's so bright. And then just release it. Give thanks, I trust, so it is, it will be. So they're decrees, so that's you being very focused. It's like it is and so it will be. And then bring yourself back. Sitting in your heart space. Feeling grounded and in the space and back in the room. I'd really like to change cards so I hope that was uh, powerful for people it's as simple as that the crystal clear focus but there are other things we can do like having a visualization board putting affirmations up around the house so that we're not even reading them each time but they're going into our subconscious because they're in front of us is a really powerful thing to do um, just uh, giving gratitude and thanks every day for what we have um, and then just uh, also thanks and gratitude for what we need to come in it's like it's already happened so you're putting it out there yeah it's really powerful stuff very powerful um, but the more we focus the more we create with intention and uh, it comes to pass even if it's as simple as just seeing all yellow cars <laughs> so now I've got the lovely earth power oracle cards um, so this is just about helping us to feel that we're in our truth and when we're in our truth you're welcome Donna thank you when we're in our truth and we're speaking our truth we're living it we're creating it um, so this one uh, can't even uh, it's New Zealand P 
Pua Onua, the place of refuge. I am forgiven, I forgive. So that's really powerful now, isn't it, about releasing past hurts, but even uh, the hurts of our ancestors, releasing, you're welcome Angie, releasing um, all the beliefs and uh, negative kind of attachments to ancestral traditions and beliefs that are holding us back but and forgiving the past forgiving ourselves and allowing ourselves to move forward into a better future the next one amazonia the amazon it's got a snake which some people you know but it's like accepting our you know our shadow self as well as our bright self there's all parts of us that makes us whole so we've just got to stand in and, and embrace all uh, aspects of ourselves that make up the whole. I am interconnected with the world in an intimate way. I am vital. I can find a way to co-create rather than confront. My friend said the other day, I respond, I don't react. And in doing so, she's creating a different reality with the people around her. So it's just about making those just doing those little tweakings of co-creating rather than confronting things and always bashing our heads up against brick walls. So just by changing our perspectives on things, we can really change our world in a very big way. And the last one is Emai and Leshan, Mount Emai. I hope that's E-M-E-I. I seek enlightenment. I am calmly above it all the tangible and intangible meet within me. So it looks a bit like, you know, Buddhism and, and that kind of thing, but actually it's about being an observer rather than a participant in all the drama around us. And as my friend said, responding rather than reacting. Um, so when we respond, we we look at it calmly and we analyse it from all angles and we see all different points of view and then we can actually... Um, do what we need to do rather than kind of get enmeshed in in uh, everyone else's drama so and Archangel Michael talks about us being observers and uh, rather than participants in you know all the uh, negative energy that's going on in the world and um, of always walking around like we have our spirit on our shoulder so uh, what would they say and and knowing that 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 then helps us to be connected to, to our spiritual selves and our higher selves and actually uh, walking the path of the higher vibration and not adding to the world's problems by reacting uh, in a negative way so you know that's a, that's a really powerful thing to do and we can do that without being in meditation all the time it's just about being aware and consciously aware using our super conscious mind which is what Archangel Michael talks about combining our conscious and our subconscious and connecting to our higher self to be our super conscious mind so that we're actually using our connection to the spiritual uh, guidance that we have in our spiritual selves and not just reacting in a physical way so that's it for today wonderful to be connecting with all of you and for those of you who would like to connect to me please do either through uh, this channel here or go to spiritual uh, go to reaching out spiritual news on Facebook and that's me and um, I will answer you straight away and we can um, talk about how I can help you so also I'm on uh, I have a website victoriacochran.com and uh, I look forward to um, seeing you all next week. Uh, same time, same channel. <laughs> Thank you for your interactions and for all your comments today and uh, for helping this session to um, be so helpful for lots of other people. So lots of love to you all. Bye for now.